And welcome back, everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube. We got Heimer Invoke Part 2. We are doing a Rank Up Sunday stream where we are focusing on one deck, playing it a lot, seeing how far we can rank up with it. I guess so far we haven't, though. We're 2 and 3, and oh, we dropped down to 64th place. That's cool, though. We are going to bring it back. Let's go right to the games. Hopefully, y'all checked out Heimer Invoke Part 1. We're going to go right to the game. So yeah, we're 2-3 and three so far, but that's okay. Um, just between these two videos, we just watched Legends of Runeterra's new uh, update on their YouTube channel of all the stuff coming up. So we're pretty hyped for the next set um, and coming already on October 14th. That's already there. Uh, Monuments of Power, right? That was the name of it. Monuments of Power. Autofield again. I always get paired against Autofield. And uh, then already in-game tournaments starting in... Hey, what's up, puppy? Starting in December. All right, so we really want to draw Heimerdinger. That's the card that we want to draw. Nope, no Heimerdinger. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. Punish transgressions. Forward in the name of the Solari. All right, I guess we'll just play both of these. Because I like, le I usually like using these as blockers, especially against aggro. I guess we'll play them as attackers. So I was thinking that like I'd have Solari Soldier turn one, Shield Bear turn two, and then maybe like Gotcha turn three. Um, <clears throat> but I am fully willing to admit that I should have gotten rid of Gotcha. So they're going to combine, make it rain, and Twisted Fate to kill both of these. My selection speaks for itself. Okay, maybe not. Really, now we get True Shot Barrage? <laughs> the one time I wanted Unlicensed Innovation? Now we get True Shot Barrage? There's only one true light! Without me. No. There's plenty of killing left. Yuck. <sighs> I think we're just going to take, I mean, the, the Golden Sister card's pretty awesome, too, and maybe I should be taking that, but I want to just kind of get some, keep going with some more Invoke. Oh, they did have Twisted Fate. That's really too bad. That's too bad. Who says I don't share? Raise your weapon, Sunwood. All right, gonna try to take these down <clears throat> with the True Shot Barrage. So I have one, one additional card in hand than I have. Escape punishment. Okay. Daylight warms the heart and I will take the following comment to be able to get rid of a gangplank. Ugh. Took my Solari Priestess. Sunlight guiding my brethren. It's a good card. Good card to nab. Yeah. 
than ever. Not sure if I'm supposed to be taking... <clears throat> oh man, then they just get the Traveler. Not sure if I'm supposed to be taking the Each Warrior or not. They're just playing my game against me. Written in stars. That could be really good. Get a nice puppy. I'm not sure if I should attack or not. I'm still just sitting on nine cards. The reason why I want it to be attacking is be basically because of Twisted Fate kill, you know, like, kill these things anyway. Try to make my Mystic Shots better. Not a good attack? Yeah, probably wasn't. I think we're dead. Nav cards are good. <clears throat> like auto, I'll just fill uh, auto fields list here of just having so much card advantage. It's looking pretty good. And we still know that he's got a huge gangplank. Yeah, there we, there's the gangplank. Say so we still know about the huge gangplank in hand. Meld? Well, GG's. Ugh. Yes, not drawing Heimerdinger in a Heimerdinger deck will definitely present problems. So we because we need we need two things. We need to not die early and then also have Heimerdinger. And that game we did a good job we did a good job of not dying early. And we should do a good job, pretty good job of not dying early also here with Solari Priestess and Solari Soldier. Alright, but this time we're going to have... We're going to have our Flash of Brilliance to go along with our Heimerdinger. So this time we we did draw Heimerdinger. So I feel pretty good about this one. Yeah, and it looks like my opponent's playing a more aggressive version and not the nab version. Nab cards are amazing against control, which is what we are. So I like playing against Dreadway Deckhand instead of Black Market Merchant. I think auto the deck that Autofield is currently playing is really well designed against me. Um, take the Sunlight guiding, my brethren. Because I already have Sunburst. Ah! 
for the six mana card. Warrior would come down like the same time the Heimerdinger would. So it's a little rough, like, playing Heimerdinger right now, I don't have Flash of Brilliance Bastion, like that, we're one mana short, which is a little rough. We're gonna just pass priority. I, need more Man, I really want to play Heimerdinger. But if they, if they just have, like, Noxian Fervor, then I'm, on, I'm in all sorts of trouble. Answers. I have them. I think we gotta play it. Good, not Noxian Fervor. It's smaller than a diagram. That's good. I must get out of here. We consider. Should we now to ten? Do we have any good t hits for <laughs> yeah, you don't for Flash of Brilliance? It doesn't seem like it. Sure doesn't seem like it. How vulnerable do I want Heimerdinger to be? If I cast Star Shaping or if I cast Sunburst, they can kill Heimerdinger. I guess that's just the way it is. I would think we're going to cast this instead. Take this Cosmic Rays. Makes sense. Yes, yeah, we watched the the new video with the Monuments of Power video. That one went that one looked really cool. That was the card they nabbed from me. I will let them nab that card, that's for sure. We can handle that. Alright, so this is going to do two damage to me. Kill both of those th these things. I can go with the Bastion and save the T-Hex. I can't save the Heimerdinger. We still take the two. Um, so this is going to be five mana. Okay, I guess that's GG's. I'm going to say I could cast the Mystic Shot. Basically, the next thing was to figure out, do I want to cast the Mystic Shot and get a 3-2 tough? Calculated. All right, more Noxus Bilgewater, though. This time, Misfortune, Gangplank. I guess I keep Guiding Touch, because it's healed Nexus, but we need to find... Uh, I don't know, maybe I'm mulligan it. We need to find the Solari cards. Ooh. Play turn one and turn two. Or Mystic Shot. Let's think, Guiding Touch is a two-mana card, but we don't really want to play it on turn two. Probably should just mulligan this. Alright, Solari card. Second worst card in our deck to a really soul. Good. The problem is I want to play this next turn, but we also have to play Solari Priestess next turn. 
a little bit of a problem. A little bit of a problem. Okay. Don't need to play the soldier yet. Alright, I'm gonna take the big lifesteal thing. Alright, down to 12 already. Hmm. That was a great draw, because that gives me uh, something that has three power to be able to block the Precious Pet. It also leaves me with three mana, because this next turn, of course, I really want to have three mana still, because I want to be able to play Heimerdinger and Flash of Brilliance. Um, you know, then we can have Golden Sister the next turn. So that was a very good draw for right here. And I'm not attacking. No prey, no pay. Aren't any goods here? Just me. My faith protects me. All right, maybe I'm not going Heimerdinger right now. We gotta have some better defense, and a three-six plays better defense. Good place to start. All right, so we're taking three, going down to 11. And then I'm going to be sunbursting at the Jack the Winner. All right, get that out of here. And now this next turn, I'm going to play Golden Sister. Ooh, be a good star shaping. So we'll, we'll get to you later, Heimerdinger. Sorry, I can't be right away. Yep. It looks like that could be a really, really clutch star shaping draw. Ooh, Pale Cascade on this Golden Sister also sounds pretty good. Take Living Legends, thank you. All right, GG's. Two and one. See, we're not necessarily bad against Bilgewater Noxus. We're just bad against Autofield's version of Bilgewater Noxus and him piloting it. So we can outgrind other late game decks. The so late game decks are really what we want to get paired against. All right, Sejuani Gangplank. I don't mind this as much. Because, oh man, I, I want to keep Heimerdinger or Flash, but should we? Yeah, we'll just keep it. Because we have all of those Sunbursts, and Sunburst is really good against both Gangplank and Sejuani. This could be a mistake, we'll see, of keeping Heimer and Flash of Brilliance, where we're not doing anything until turn five, so. <laughs> I got the Solari Soldier, and. Punish transgressions. We'll wait till turn five before we start doing other stuff. Lucky you. Our deck hasn't helped us out. You know, I kept those two because then we've drawn three cards and none of those three Open we could cast before turn five anyway. Get your work. If I, mean, I guess I can play this Bastion. You won't feel it play Bastion plus Pale Cascade. No mercy for heretics. I guess it's better than not playing anything. Ah! 
Not ideal. Yeah, like specific cards that we're looking for with the invoke effect. Um, nothing real. No, there's no like there's not like any specific cards that necessarily that we're looking for with the invoke effect. It's just, it's really like just what each game's different and just you know like with the, the choices of the three, thinking about how the next few turns are going to go, what my opponents can play, which one will be the most effective for us. But there's not like a any design card that I that I'm always looking for. So if we play nothing, then we'll have. The Heimer Flash of Brilliance next turn. All hands on deck. My faith protects me. Alright, I'm gonna play out another blocker. Is Crackshot Corsair or Prowling Cutthroat more I need to kill this card? I guess we can I guess it's probably Prowling Cutthroat. I'll just do that right now. So, next turn I'm probably going to be playing Vi. Maybe that's me playing that early. Okay, them not playing anything else. Uh, I guess we're, we are going to go ahead and just go with the Heimerdinger now. Stop nabbing my stuff. Maybe they waste nine mana. Ours is the one true light. Tildover Enforcer on the scene. Getting rid of this Crackshot Corsair. Killing that's free. So three out of five with both of those. No. Another Yodel Grifter, another hit. Another nab card. More warning shots. I don't like the sound of that. So we're not going to draw any more Heimerdingers. That's good news. Can't draw another one. I only put three in the deck. Considering more, but only went with three. Come on. Drop me now to seven. Could block with Heimerdinger. Interesting solution. Puts me to ten. Engines don't determine themselves. Because Vi costs uh, regular mana, we couldn't flash a brilliance first. Because flash a brilliance just refills the spell mana. We can't use the spell mana to be able to cast Vi. And it's the same thing here. I couldn't play Flash of Brilliance with that other Heimerdinger in play because I need all the spell mana. True Shot Barrage. Yes, yes, again. True Shot Barrage does not kill a Gangplank. Am I casting basically? Am I casting Guiding Touch, or if I'm, or am I saving Spell Mana? That's the question here. Took Mystic Shot from me. Move it. It's a card I'd love to have. Um, all right, so next turn eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I won't be able to Star Shaping and play anything that we get from Star Shaping. Eleven does mean we can play Heimer and Star Shaping, though. If I don't play the Guiding Touch, there's Sunburst. I like saying that. Imminently logical. Sunburst kill Gangplank. At least try. 
So the bad news about playing... The bad news about playing Heimer first is we don't get to silence, so if they have a pump spell, then they can keep Gangplank alive. Oh, come on. really bad news. I think they're going to get me with these Yordle Grifters and Reptide Rex. Still probably a good combination. I messed that game up pretty bad. Like, I could have done a lot better with that game. Alright, so should not have blocked with Heimerdinger. That's a, a good lesson. I was a little worried about my life total, but just should not have done it. Yeah, Vi plus Zenith Blade is good. Yeah. Um, yes, Vi, Vi plus Zenith Blade is good. Everything else in our deck plus Zenith Blade is not any good. Zenith, Zenith Blade, any other time besides having Vi in play, is not really very good, and it's just not... As you can see, like, with the, all these games, the only way that we've been... The way, we, way we've been struggling is with decks that are, like, aggressive and... Like, aggressive decks that are doing damage to us. We're not losing any late games. And, uh... And so that's, that's what we... Zenith Blade doesn't help stop aggressive decks from killing you. And so there's no, we don't need it. Daylight warms the heart All right, Traveler just kind of fits our our plan for next turn pretty well. Yeah, we watched the announcement video. Looks really cool. Looks like uh, looks like there's a lot of great stuff coming in at Legends of Runeterra, and should be pretty sweet. All right, gonna grab this cosmic inspiration that's awesome with Heimerdinger. So yeah, a lot of good stuff coming in Legends of Runeterra. So no Bastion, cannot stop, cannot stop single combat. Sunlight guided my brethren. And fire! Okay, so I want to play Cosmic Inspiration. The problem with playing Cosmic Inspiration is I could single combat and kill my traveler, and I do not have another um I do not have another celestial card. So, I, unfortunately, I can't really do that. So, I think my plan is just to get more Celestial cards this turn. Maybe go Solari Priestess and Star Shaping. Cool. I wanted to find Obliterate. So, if their plan is to play Lux this turn, we can Obliterate Lux. Or force them to have a Bastion, I suppose. Raise your weapon, Sunwood! That was not their plan. At least not yet. Alright, cool. Ten cards. That's a lot of cards. Do I think long term they should have spectator view for top players? Um... Yeah. It depends. I guess. Depends on, on what your question is. Like... I don't think I don't think it, you should necessarily like just be able to just join in of like like whatever top player is just playing a you know just a random game that they're just just you know kind of playing on the ladder. I don't I don't think that that should be necessary like without their consent kind of thing. Like I, I don't think you should just be able to watch watch people play without their consent. Like you know maybe they're trying out something new. Maybe they're trying you know I don't know but. 
Um, having spectator view for whenever people want you to be able to watch or, or things like that, or maybe replays after games. Maybe that'd be okay. I don't know. I guess I'm not really too well informed of, of the whole spectator view and really what it's what it's really like, what kind of demand there is, what uh, all that kind of stuff. I guess I just don't I don't have a lot of a lot of experience, theories, anything like that with spe spectator view. So the, I don't I don't know if I'm supposed to be casting this flash of brilliance. The problem with casting it is now I guess I don't get yeah, I don't get the turret, the seven, or like, okay, I wasn't going to get that turret anyway. That's right. Sorry, I was talking about that other thing. I knew in my mind, I knew there was a reason to do it, right? I wasn't going to get the turret from the, because the Heimerdinger was going to die anyway. Okay, so now, so we can attack with these turrets. They block with the cavalry. Just pass. So that makes sense. League of Legends, there's there's spectator, but you can disable spectator people out of your friends list if you'd like. That that all makes a lot of sense. Unyielding light. So with the cosmic inspiration, I don't really see us losing this game. I don't I don't really see Lux Leona defeating us. Okay, you used to play a lot of Dota. The spectator view is great there. So, yeah, I have no, I have no experience with that. I've never, I've never seen any spectator view before or anything. So I guess I'm not, I'm not somebody who's really well equipped to say is it necessary for this game to have spectator view. Sorry, I wish I had a better answer, but I guess that's my answer. Is I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing this my way. I wish I knew. Also, I need to attack to just help clear up space. I was thinking about like attacking with the cavalry and then also gotcha. You know, like they would block with the cavalry. So I trade that and gotcha. But then I also just want the mana each one of these turns. But I kind of need to clear up both the space in play and in hand. Answers. I have them. Casting this guiding touch. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I can't even count these. Four, eight, nine. Yeah, let's just cast this. All right, perfect. Another uh, cosmic inspiration. Glorious light rains down. Look to the sky. Yeah, two of my Heimerdingers are gone. Not great. That's okay. We're gonna be just fine. We will not suffer unbelief. They will not escape punishment. We're gonna be just fine. Our strength is forever at its zenith. Blessed daylight surrounds you. Cause you know, we still have like the progress day. Draw a bunch more cards. We still have a really soul waiting in the wings somewhere. And another Heimer, and of course you have the star shaping to find something else. 
Drew Shop Barrage can do some stuff. We're going to be just fine. Our strength is forever at its zenith. Blessed daylight surrounds you. Look to the sky. Scorching light! Attack. Do your worst. Take 21. Unbeliever. Nah, not taking 21. Like heretic. No mercy for heretics. <laughs> I know, Cosmic Inspiration is crazy. Even with the nerf, it's still just pretty crazy. Alright, so they're gonna stay it at. Or no, go down to 13 now. I'm gonna keep this thing alive with that Pill Cascade. So, kind of the only way that I can lose is if Leona stuns with a whole bunch of things, and then they alpha attack. That's the only way I can possibly lose. Right? Still seems pretty unlikely. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. Behold the sun's holy light. I could obliterate Leona. I don't know if I really want to do that. My faith protects me. To the sky. All right, I guess we will. Okay. Bastion. We're gonna say nope to Bastion. If I can play another Leona, I still have three blockers, but now like this, this spent like a lot of their mana and everything. Even another Leona, we still got three blockers. And I can get a fourth blocker if I want shield bear over these things, but I just, I don't want to. But if we need to, we could get a fourth blocker. Yeah, it could have maybe been Morning Light. Yeah, the Leona champion spell. Yeah, GG's. That was probably their only way to win that game. Pretty much Noxus and Bilgewater Noxus is everywhere. This is what we've gotten paired against most every time. Oh no no no, we we did lose I guess never mind, we lost to gang we lost to a gangplank deck that wasn't Noxus. Right? The gangplank said Juani. That that one's not Noxus, that was just regular Bilgewater. Okay, anyway, Mystic Shot, Shield Bear, awesome. Uh, and then we have Heimerdinger, gotta keep Heimerdinger. Sunburst not so much, but three out of four. Four out of five. We'll take four out of these five. And the Sunburst could be important against Gangplank later. Coming in hot. Later. Unyielding light. Ding, 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 ding. We will not suffer unbelievers. They will not escape punishment. Punishment. Explosives primed. Who's on top of the bounty board today? Ugh. Follow the horizon. Down to three cards in hand. My way. Fall, heretic. You cannot sway me. Not sure which one of these I want to block. Fall, heretic. I guess it's the grenadier. They're doing damage to me anyway this turn, so that deal one doesn't really help their gangplank level up. Because either way, they're dealing damage to me. In shining sunlight. Like a fish in water. Not a very good shield bearer as a blocker, but gonna use that two mana instead of wasted and just put it into play. Eminently logical. Who's ready for the show? Mm. Yep, just 
get get another walker out there. Wish we had eight mana for Sunburst and Mystic Shot. I guess we got Vi and Mystic Shot now. We'll definitely go in Sunburst. Ouch. This is gonna hurt. So I guess we're taking six damage. Okay, where are you blocking? Swing. There you go. So we're taking six. This thing does another two damage to me. Nice to have the, the mystic shot right now to be able to kill this thing. Okay. So what's next? Probably Vi and Mystic Shots. If they don't break, they'll burn. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I just got here and I heard we've only lost the because I thought, oh you, you lost all your games. No, I mean, we've beaten Noxus a couple of times, too, but those are... But I guess we did lose to a Bilgewater deck. So it wasn't only Noxus. Um... Get him where it hurts. Eat this! You can't do this! So my plan originally, of course, was to challenge the Sprayfin, but with this Demolitionist coming into play, Demolitionist is a great target for the Sleep with the Fishes. So I'm going to be challenging the Demolitionist instead. Well, that's going to hurt. Alright, come on, Star Shaping. That's, of course, really bad. Come on, Star Shaping. We can draw Guiding Touch. Ah, so close. We had the two other. We had two other of the two mana cards, and we did find Star Shaping if we just had that Guiding Touch. So close. Yeah, their hand was amazing. That was an awesome hand of, um, you know, curving out with both Jack the Winner and Gangplank. Uh, yeah, that was just an awesome hand. And then, you know, having the, the Noctrian Fervor, the Decimate, <laughs> it was just perfect. Um, you know, what <clears throat> the the one mana, two, one fearsome on turn one, your two mana Legion Grenadier on turn two, um, turn three, double spell with one drop and two drop um, on turn three, right? Like they played, they played Legion Saboteur and Hired Gun on turn three, turn four, Zap Sprayfin. Turn five, Jack the Winner. Turn six, Gangplank plus, um, Gangplank plus, Make It Rain that killed a bunch of stuff and you know dealt like plus two damage and Make It Rain on turn six, and then turn seven. Now you got Noxion Fervor for the blocker, and Imperial Demolitionist, and it, it was just crazy. Like that, that was just a, a crazy, crazy game. Like it, it's as good as you can draw it up. That's what that game was. All right, so three and three uh, in this video. Getting a little closer. Um, still, so I am only playing two Guiding Touch and two Star Shaping, but starting to look like I need more of both of those. Um, yeah, that's what it's kind of looking like. Sunburst has been good, but that, that is one thing about uh, Thermogenic Beam is you do get to play Thermogenic Beam on turn one. Like, Thermogenic Beam is awesome on turn one and turn two. I really don't like it in the late game, but early on, early, like, turn one, it's amazing. Um, so, like, you know, that is really good against the aggressive decks to have that card early. Yeah, maybe I don't need a main deck the progress day. Maybe I don't. It's so good with, with the High Redinger. It's so good against the later decks, but... Maybe we just don't need it. All right, I'm, I'm fine taking out the progress day. 
Yeah, we, we can take that out. We can take that out for another star shaping. Where you have similar, similar kind of, similar kind of effect of being absolutely amazing with Heimerdinger and in late game, but then star shaping helps keep you alive. Let's do that. Let's trade. Let's change out one that that uh, progress day for one star shaping. Let's do that. All right, so that's what we're gonna do here for uh, part three. Those y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Of course, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of this format and stuff like that. And uh, come on back for part three. Let's see how we can do uh, with this deck coming up. Thanks for watching. See you for the next video.